Hey everybody, it's Ben here. And as we know, electric vehicle adoption just keeps increasing. And to go with it, we need electric vehicle charging stations. So whether it's at home or at work, we need places to plug in our electric cars. And when these stations are installed new, we need to make sure that they're installed correctly. And sometimes when they're older, they need to be diagnosed and repaired. But how do you even go about doing that? Well, that's why I'm excited that I got this box here from Fluke. And as we know, Fluke is a leader in electronic diagnostic equipment. I kind of think of them as the really good high quality multimeters, but they really have uh, a very large line of products, including what's in this box. So we're gonna open it up, take a look at what's inside. Oh, it's a treasure trove. Okay, we have a very nice multimeter, model 87. We've got some silicone test leads. And these are actually, they don't have probes on the end. It looks like they're for connecting uh, uh, one item to another item. and our electric vehicle charging station test adapter. Okay, let's open this guy up. Um, according to what's on the box, it looks like we have a tester uh, and then adapters for J1772 and Tesla or North American charging standard. And maybe a case here too. Oh, nice. Oh, very cool. Okay. Right away, we get a really nice looking case here. Black, bright yellow. It's got some branding right across there. Um, it's always great when you get tools that have a case that you can keep everything together. And right inside, there's a little divider down the middle. And we've got our tester. instruction manual. And this is the Tesla style connector. It has a quick disconnect on the other end to go to the tester unit. And a J1772 connector. Now what's funny about this is it looks just like what you would plug into your car, but it's actually the opposite of that. Uh, so that what normally would go into your car plugs straight into this instead. And I'm just going to make sure there's not anything in the accessory little side pocket here. No, that's empty, but it's got spot for uh, your pens and probes. And you know what? I bet it looks like that multimeter would fit really nice in that side pocket right there as well. So let's put this down out of the way. And pop open that multimeter. Oop. <laughs> I opened it upside down. Well, right away, I can tell you it feels really nice and solid. It's a, <laughs> uh, you know, it definitely feels well built. It does have the spots on the back built in where you can just stick a probe in there and it'll be hands free for you. Um, has a nice little pop-up stand so it can stand up all by itself that's kind of nice other meters i you know find i'm laying them flat and then you can't read it or nice big dials on it and it's ready to go very cool and then of course uh we got some test leads here now these don't have kind of your probe style tips on them these are instead designed you see we've got kind of our, our typical uh, connectors for connecting probes on here. But then also on our EVSE tester, it actually has connections right here so that we can connect um, our EVSE tester up to the multimeter, just one straight to the other, um, you know, hands-free, no loose exposed connectors, anything like that. 
so these will be able to go right between the two. These feel really nice too. These are the, um, uh, it's like a good quality silicone uh, insulation on these. Those are rated up to a uh, thousand volts, which, you know, if you're doing other work on electric cars or something like that, um, you know, DC battery packs can easily be uh, pretty high voltage. Oh, <laughs> surprisingly long too. You don't have to worry about uh, having connectors that are uh, too short. And then depending on what tests you're going to run, uh, you can actually connect in uh, to these ports here, or there's another pair up on top. So let's come in close, look at some of the details on here. This is line one and line two, or neutral, depending if you're doing 120 or 240. There's PE, protective earth, the, the big main ground. Several different tests that you can run, including uh, GFCI. And then right here, this lets you test various um, states, um, uh, putting the vehicle into different states of charge, uh, connected, connected but not charging, connected and charging, that sort of thing. And then on the top here, those are the connections uh, for the CP signal and the ground that goes with it. And that's primarily for uh, the EVSE to signal to the vehicle what its maximum current is. And on some, some EVSEs, that's actually variable. Uh, that can uh, change depending on certain situations. But overall, nice solid handheld unit. And this should be fun to try out on a real EVSE. So let's do some tests here with our Fluke FEV100. Over here I have an electric vehicle charging station. This one happens to be a popular brand name, but it's an older model uh, installed at a home business. And this is exactly the type of thing that you might need to be doing some troubleshooting on. So I just activated it because uh, without that I can't even unlock the cable, which is J1772. So that's what I've got hooked up here. Although just as easily we have the Tesla charging adapter as well if you need to do the North American charging standard. So the first thing I'm going to do here is simply plug this in. And now we can simulate uh, as though this were a car the various uh, connections. Not connected, connected, waiting for the car to respond, ready to charge. A, uh, we're essentially not doing anything yet. B, right now uh, we'd be communicating with the car. The car may not be ready yet. Uh, the EVSE may actually ask for some billing information. And then on C, that's going to be charging without ventilation and it should kick the power on. So another thing we can do here is check our power. Now right there, I heard the main contactor click on. If I look down here in the shade, I can see that we have our power indicator. And because I have the leads here from L1 and L2 connected to our power meter, I can see that we're at a 240 volt system. Without this, I don't know if we're 120 volt, 240 volt, three phase 208 volt, no idea, but now I do. And in fact, this voltage is a little high which you know could indicate a problem except in this particular case i know that we're very close to a neighborhood transformer uh there's also solar at this facility which is uh, boosting the voltage up a little higher than it otherwise would be now besides the uh, control pilot signals that we can simulate on here we can also run a couple of safety tests so before we even get started there is a protective earth pretest. There is a protective earth error, which we can generate just by pressing the button and a GFCI test, again, generating that just by pressing the button. Uh, there's also a control pilot error. Uh, and what we do with that is hold the button down and then go to uh, whichever control pilot setting we would want, but then have it 
not activate. So for example, uh, not connecting the main power on. So let's just say we want to simulate that GFCI error. Uh, let's say there would be a car here, it's charging, but it's in a rainstorm. Uh, water gets in there and power should automatically shut it down. And if it doesn't, that's a dangerous risk of shock situation. So right now, we should be able to press the GFCI test. It should kill power. And in this case, because there's a nice little display up here, uh, actually display an error for us as well. And we're going to hear that main contactor drop out as well as power getting killed right here. So let's do it, GFCI test. And we know this unit is good because it did in fact react exactly as we expected it to. Uh, the power has dropped out. Uh, we see our power indicator right here is gone and we get our error message up here as well. Now another test that we can do with the Fluke FEV100 is to actually check the maximum output of current from the EVSE. Let's say somebody uh, realizes that their car isn't charging as fast as it ought to be able to. Maybe there's an issue with the unit. Sometimes machines like this are set with a, a dial or programming or even a jumper inside the machine which could be misset. So the first thing we can do is look on the outside of the unit and see what the maximum output current should be, but then we can actually test it. And we're going to be doing that by using the CP signal and protective earth output on here and connecting that to a multimeter which supports uh, testing cycle duty of a pulse width modulation signal. And that's uh, one of the great things about this model 87 meter right here is that it has the ability to do cycle duty. It also has some great features for working with variable frequency drives. So if you work in the industry or you uh, work on electric vehicles, it's pretty nice features there. So let's plug in from the meter to our output here. And what it's going to tell us is a cycle duty as a percent. Got that plugged in, and that percent, 50 percent. But what does that mean? Unfortunately, uh, J1772 doesn't give us a nice human readable output. What we have to do is compare cycle duty to a chart. There's one of those right in the Fluke manual here. And by looking it up, I can see that a 50 percent duty cycle corresponds to 30 amps. And in fact, this is a 30 amp unit, so it looks like everything's working right. It's producing the correct output of maximum current. And if it wasn't, that's when we would go into troubleshooting. Maybe check the settings, jumpers, things like that to make sure it can output the appropriate amount of current. The Fluke FEV100 allows you to check for power, perform all your safety tests, and simulate an electric vehicle in all the various states of charge. And then if you combine it with a high quality multimeter like the Fluke 87 Mark V, you're also able to verify the exact charging voltage and the maximum available charging current. We all know how important it is to have the right tools for the job and that they're high quality. So if you're an electrician, you're installing EVSEs, you're troubleshooting them, this is definitely a set of equipment that you want to have. For more about Fluke EVSE tools, please check out the link in the video description. And until next time, stay charged up.